Hey guys, what's up? Thank you so much for tuning in today here at Elevate Church. We know that today's message is going to rock your world and elevate your life to the next level. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the message. Well, let's talk about anger. Anger is, um, is obviously something that we all experience. For example, um, pretty much my whole childhood life, my youth and ad- adult, young adult life, I dealt with, with a lot of anger. My anger actually was enraged. And, um, and the reason was because I had um, a, a really bad event with, with my father. And uh, he hurt our family. He caused a lot of, a lot of uh, uh, pain and hurt and damage. And so for years and years, I, I carried this, this anger. And, and it eventually became so enraged that uh, the community I grew up in, which was gang infested, uh, gave me a nickname. They called me Temper. And uh, the reason was because, you know what, uh, I can explode at any time. And, uh, and this, is, this is what became my character. Uh, but how many know that when, when you come to Jesus and, and you're willing to, to work things out with God, God can do something with the anger and, and, and switch it up and change it. Let me give you a, a very simple definition of anger because I believe it's going to bless you. What is anger? Anger is simply an emotion of fear and or hurt. It's an emotion. Anger is an emotion of fear or it's an emotion of hurt. Has anyone here ever been hurt? Lift your hand. Okay, if you've been hurt, you've been angry. Has anyone ever been in a moment where they just had fear? Fear gripped them. Sickness came, right? All that is tied into anger. And uh, I believe that anger is also a God-given, okay, emotion. I think sometimes we confuse anger with um, anger is an evil thing, and, and, and we blame the devil for the anger. No, anger is an actual gift. It's an emotion that God has given us for a healthy purpose. So there is such thing as a healthy anger, and there is such thing as a destructive anger. For example, a righteous anger should motivate you to action when you see an injustice, for example, let's take our kids in Oaxaca. When I went to Oaxaca, I saw the injustice of children being trafficked, labor trafficked. And when I saw that injustice, I got angry on the inside that there are people in that community who are buying children, who are lying to parents saying they're going to give them a better life, a better future. And the parents get X amount of money in trade for their children, and then their children become these labor, you know, agents for these underground organizations, and they just use them and use them and use them, and they work them from the age of four years old, and who knows how long they go, and it goes from labor to sex traffic, and so I had a righteous indignation, and I said, hell no. So healthy anger motivates you to do something. Uh, and of course, and now you know, we, we opened the school, and uh, we, we've been able to bring a lot of hope to children, and, uh, and that's, that's healthy anger. So, so anger is, is an emotion that has been gifted to you and I by God and from God. And so it's not, it's not an evil thing until you allow the devil to get a foothold in your life. You see, an opportunity for you to get angry is always going to be present every single day of your life to get angry with a co-worker to get angry with your spouse to get angry with your children but but the reality is that you and I need to begin to understand that we have the power to rule our anger and the anger not rule our life and that's what I want to talk about and so tonight today I want to I want to lay a foundation so Stay with me because we're going to hit this topic very hard and you're going to realize that maybe right now, maybe you have what's called blind anger. For example, rude people don't know they're rude. <laughs> have you ever met someone rude and you just tell them, man, you're just, that's very, that's very rude. I'm not rude. <laughs> I'm nice. But all of us in the room know you're rude, <laughs> right? A jealous person doesn't know they're jealous. 
And so sometimes an angry person doesn't know they're angry. And so we need to uncover, right? We need to discover what are some of the issues that we may have that have been unresolved and that honestly is probably a big reason why we are the way we are, why we act the way we act, why we be the way we be. And let's start having some change and some transformation so that we can have what God wants us to have. And that's what we need to do together. And so I, I, I really, uh, I know that, that we're going to be learning a lot of things because we want to uh, understand that we don't want to go from anger to danger because anger has different levels and stages if, if it's not dealt with, okay? That's why I called this series, you know what, anger, you're one letter away from? Anger can lead you to places that you may not be able to come back from. For example, I, as I'm working more and more with government now, um, God is expanding Elevate Church's influence majorly right now. And uh, I was with uh, the, 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 the general attorney and, uh, and his staff. And all these different staff members were political people that work with children who are at risk in, in the country. And as I was talking with them, they were describing to me the issue of Oaxaca, of, of, of just, uh, you know, the, the, the issue of abuse, the issue of alcoholism, the issue of drugs, and, uh, and the issue of violence. And, uh, and as they were talking, they were telling me about the juvenile hall system and, and how, you know, they don't have the resources and they don't have the, 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 the people even to address some of the issues. And, and I was so moved with anger again as I was sitting in the meeting. And I said, I want to go to this, it's, they call it the DEMA. And I said, I want to go to the DEMA. I have to see this with my own eyes. And guess what? So as I was walking into the DEMA, which is juvenile hall, I saw all these children from ages 8 years old to 17, 18 years old. But I met this, this girl, 12 years old, 12 years old, who obviously had severe anger or unresolved anger issues that took her from anger to danger. And this 12-year-old precious little girl, when I met this 12-year-old little girl, she had the most beautiful smile and shook my hand. But let me tell you something. That little girl, she murdered her mother. She stabbed her mother 37 times. Don't confuse the fact that we can elevate anger. So it, it's not just necessarily for you to address your anger, but as, as, as people of God, you should have the, 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 the tools necessary to be equipped to help others so that we don't see a child like this 12-year-old girl kill her mother because she has unresolved issues called anger. Please turn off your cell phones before I get angry. How many have ever played hangman? I'm about to hang some people right now. No, but just kidding. <laughs> Listen, I, I, I want to liken anger uh, to hangman. Here's why. You know the game hangman. Hangman, you basically, you have to uh, discover letters that will create a word, right? And so if you don't, if you miss the mark, well, of course, you, for every letter you don't get, you create a little a head, then you got the little body, stick body, the hand body, the legs, and, and, and then, you know, some people cheat. They do fingers and hands because, you know, they can't, yeah, you know, who, you know who you are out there. And then there's the noose, but I didn't do the noose because, you know what, I don't want anybody to send me emails tomorrow about, oh, how dare you? And so what happens is it's called hang man when you don't figure out uh, the word. Well, let me tell you something. Anger is no different. Anger has a root, and if you don't figure it out, you're going to hang yourself. And then you'll be hung up with all kinds of things in your life. Anger also has cousins called bitterness, huh? has, has sisters called unforgiveness. Anger leads you to all kinds of directions, 
And, and if it's not addressed, if it's not discovered, you can go 5, 10, 15, 20, like me, 21 years of straight up anger, just angry. And I used that anger to fuel me in, in the streets, which wasn't very smart or wise. And, and this is a reality that we have to face as, as the church. You know what? The church should have victory. The church should be overcomers. The church should be people that are assisting people that are dangerous to themselves and, and help people find the answer. And that answer is Jesus, right? Listen, God was so angry that sin separated you and me from God he was so angry that Satan came in and interrupted love, the love of God, right? The relationship that God wanted with you and I and separated us. And then God got angry and said, you know what? Enough. And you know what he does? He sent his only son, Jesus. He, anger should motivate you to do something right. And so he sent his son, and we know the story. Jesus died for us, paid for our sins, etc. And he brought us back to, to relationship with God, but how many know that though you're a Christian, a believer, it's so easy to separate yourself again when sin comes in. It's so easy. It's easier to sin than not. It really is. But as we, as we become a little bit more mature in our spiritual walk with God, I, I really believe that we can get, uh, we can get some, some major fruit. And so once again, there is healthy anger and there's destructive anger. A healthy anger is always going to produce fruit. An unhealthy anger is always going to produce destruction. You're going to mess up relationships. Come on, if you always have issue with relationships, I promise you it's tied to anger. If you always have an issue of not being able to keep a stable job, I promise you there's probably some relation to anger. You have to realize that God wants to set his people free. God wants to heal. God wants to restore. God wants to redeem your life. Anger will rob you years and years and years of life of blessings. It will steal from you. As a matter of fact, the Bible says in James, let him who stole steal no longer. And you know the verses before that, you know what he's talking about in James? Anger. So anger will literally steal years from your life. Years of peace, years of joy, anger will steal the most awesome relationships that God wants to bring in your life. But I believe that in the next few weeks that we're going to hear some great testimonies of people being set free. Listen, I can never forget what God said to me. This is probably I was two years of being a Christian, two to three years. And I remember worshiping God like we just did in a worship service. I was just worshiping him and, and I heard God say, Mauricio. You need to forgive your father. Oh, I got so angry. I'm like, what the heck? What do you mean forgive? No, he needs to be asking me for forgiveness. Right? Because I didn't cause the damage. He caused the damage. When I remember growing up, I can see kids. I, I would hate it when they had, back in my days, back in the, 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 the 80s, it, 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 was, it, was, it really was all about family in the 80s. Now it's not like that. But in, in the school, they would have Father Sunday. And I remember all these kids having their dads with them, and I would just be angry because I had no father. So you know what? I, I became very resentful towards what I saw. Do you, do you understand that, that angry can also be tied into uh, not only your jealousy, but, but you can be blinded by anger and not even know that there are some issues inside. When you have an issue celebrating someone else's success, you're angry. When you have issues celebrating someone's promotion, you have anger issues. When you have an issue celebrating someone's newlywed marriage, <laughs> you got some anger issues. When you ain't happy for people, when something good happens in their life, you have anger issues. That's the the. The body of Christ, the church, man, we're supposed to be the most celebratory kind of people when anyone's blessed. And so if you can think about some things like, man, you know, I didn't get the promotion. You're angry. But so and so, and you start thinking, well, they're not qualified. You have anger issues. Is this making some sense? 
So let's just, let's just uncover some things and just be honest with each other right now so that we can, we can address some of the stuff, right, uh, that, that God wants to heal. And so the reality is that, that God has woven this emotion, this emotion. Ever say emotion. Anger is an emotion, okay? And so he has woven this emotion in our spirit in order for us to be motivated to do awesome things, not destructive things. That's what God wants out of this emotion. And, uh, and he's also made anger as a warning system to you and I. You know, in Mexico, which I'm, not, I'm shocked that the United States isn't on top of this like this. Um, in Mexico, now they have a system uh, that warns them one minute before the next earthquake. And I was shocked. And it recently worked. They had an aftershock. One minute before, the alarms went, and everybody went and just gathered themselves together and were prepared. And exactly 60 seconds, boom, the earthquake hit. Let me tell you something. Anger is no different. God says, I placed anger inside of you as a gift to warn you that you're on your way to destruction. Does that make sense? And so God's saying, I, I have given you the gift to be able to see before you get yourself in a really bad mess. So the Holy Spirit who lives in us will nudge us. Come on, he, he wants to nudge us. He wants to tell us, hey, listen, I'm warning you, this may not be good for you. Because everyone deals with anger differently. You know what I'm saying? Some people internalize their anger. Let me see all my internalizers. Just wave your hands in it. You just internalize it like, yeah, I'm going to bottle it up. And then, I, and then you have your explosives. Let me see all my explosives out there. Yay! Yeah, yeah, explosives. Ah! You look like that, right? I talk! But let me tell you, listen, but the cray crays are the internalizers. They're the most craziest. Man, you know, because at least us, at least us that, that are external, externally loud, at least, man, at least we're honest about it. The internalizers, nothing's wrong. And, and, but, man, but inside, they're just like this volcano. And it's just about to erupt. And at least I warn you. I come and I'm like, ah! And then you're just like, oh, my God, is this, when's this person going to blow up? Oh, my God. You, know, you just never know. And there's no warning for it either. And then you're just like, I had no idea that you were angry at me. Oh, my God. What is wrong? So they're cray-cray. Let me see all my internalizers again. <laughs> so us explosives, <laughs> we're awesome. No, we're not. We, 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 we suck. Yeah, we suck too. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Everybody, everybody responds differently to anger. E every single one of us, uh, we, we respond differently. Let me show you a scripture now, okay? So, uh, because God doesn't want us to, to hang on to unresolved issues anymore. So here's what he says. Ephesians 4, verse 26 and 27 says this. It says, in your anger. So is anger, is anger an evil thing? No. Everybody say, it's not an evil thing. Say, it's a good thing. Say, it's a God thing. Okay, but it can become an evil thing. Okay, how can it become an evil thing? He says, in your anger, do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you are what? Still angry. And do not give the devil what? Why? Because if the devil gets a foothold, then he gets a stronghold on you. That's how it works. And, and, and the devil is an opportunist. He is an opportunist. He's always looking for an opportunity to come in. See, the moment you're about to react, Satan shows like, <laughs> yes. And he's just like waiting, okay, what are you going to decide? What are you about to do? And he's just like, yeah, I'm waiting for that door to open. And then I'm going to put my foot in there, and that's it. I'm in. And so um, I, I've shared this once before. It's been a while, but I'll share it again. I, I'm going to tell on myself, you know what? I had a moment where, where I almost lost it. And, and you know what? Um, this is in Oaxaca. We had this little girl named Gabby. Gabby was about three, four years old, and uh, we were already going to bring her in our school. Later, we found out that she was being labor trafficked, okay? And, uh, and so uh, we lost that opportunity. And I remember walking through the Socalo. They had a spot where they always worked uh, with her family. The whole family was being labor trafficked. And uh, they sell items, et cetera. And, and this is, they're just, they're, they're the modern day slaves, basically. And, and I remember walking through the Socalo, and I saw this white dude, okay, nothing against white people, okay, but he's a, he's a white brother. He could have been European, I don't know. Maybe Canadian, I don't know. <laughs> but, uh, 
but uh, what happened was, as I'm walking through the Socalo, he, I see him, and he is soliciting Gabby from the mom for sexual pleasure. And I just, uh, as I'm walking to him, oh, in my head, I'm already on his face. I'm beating him black and blue, okay? Anger. Is anger, is anger a sin? No. Stay with me. Is anger a sin? No. no. When is it a sin? When you react. And I know some of you are a little bit more cray cray than me. Some of you would already have a gun in your head and, <laughs> a, 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 you know, a grenade or some of you a little woo, you know, a little out there. But, but, but I started seeing myself and, and I, when I finally got to him, man, I swung. Oh, no, I'm just kidding. I didn't do that. <laughs> no, I didn't do that. But I, I, I warned him. <laughs> I warned him. And uh, I, I basically told him what would happen to him if he didn't walk away. Uh, but but I, had a, I, had an, I had an opportunity. Satan had an opportunity to get the best of me right there. And listen, and sometimes, sometimes anger can take you on a ride that you can't get back from anymore. It's called regret. And we all have some regret in our life that was tied to anger. Some of you have lost great relationships because you let your anger get the best of you. Some of you, you don't, you wish you had that connection again with that person or those people. Some of us, we, we, we have to self-examine ourselves and say, you know what, maybe I overreacted. Maybe, maybe I was the issue. Maybe it really wasn't them. But see, anger, unhealthy anger, will never allow you to see your truth or the reality. When you, when you have blind anger, it's everyone else's fault and not you. And we have a lot of those in the church. A lot. Help us, Lord. <laughs> it's true. Why? Because there's a lot of unresolved issues. Church people don't like to deal with their issues. Let's not talk about it. Let's not go there. No, we need to go there. We need to talk about it. God exposes to heal. Satan exposes, exposes you to destroy you. God doesn't want to expose you to hurt you. God wants to expose you to love you. And I don't know where you're at right now. I don't know what you may be dealing with. Maybe you're someone that you're so angry, you're waiting for someone or group of people to come back and apologize and get it right with you. Well, guess what? You may wait a very long time, and you may wait until the last breath you have in your life, and they'll never come and do what you think they're going to do. Let him who stole steal no longer. Stop trying to wait for someone to make you better. Guess what? No human being on planet earth can make you better. Only God can heal you. Only God can restore you. Only God can, can redeem your life. And, and, and listen, don't get it twisted e either. We have all have been responsible for hurting someone as well. Let's not just be thinking about, they hurt me, they hurt me, they were mean, they were. No, listen, so have you. So have I. We have all done this. But how many know that there is redemption with Jesus? Huh? You need to be the person that stops, says, and take, take the knee off of your chest and allow yourself to get back up. Some of us have turned our anger to self-hatred, where you hate yourself. You hate yourself because you, you, you may have created a huge mess in life. But guess what? At some point, you have to allow God to, to restore you and heal you because if not, you are going to elevate this anger to danger. And then from danger, you're going to do something you're going to regret, and then it's a whole mess. God, God wants to love you through whatever it is. Some people are still, they still have the hangnail of the divorce. You just can't let it go. You, you can't move on. 
whether it was that person who left you or you were the one who left them and whatever happened. But at some point, you're going to have to remove the knee off of your chest and allow yourself to get back up and say, okay, you know, God, I'm going to bring this to you. You need to help me through this. I don't want to keep having the sting of the pain. Some of you have been betrayed by people that you trusted and you loved and they hurt you. They hurt you. And now you have this, this, this countenance of trust no one. And then you're that standoff. If you're someone that's always isolating yourself, you have anger issues. You know why? Because you don't know how to deal with people. Why? Because you don't know how to even deal with yourself. Why? Because you hate yourself. And the only reason people hurt people is because they're hurting. Hurt people hurt people. Does that, does that, does that connect with you? Okay, so we got to examine and say, man, what's going on on the inside of me? What's happening? I have to stop internalizing all this anger. I have to stop it, and I have to just allow God, as I, as I go through the process of, of healing, I want God to show me what is it about my life? What is holding me back from my blessing? What is it that keeps interrupting my healing? Because the devil's going to get a foothold, and then he creates strongholds in your life. And so here, how does anger work? Here's how anger works. It starts with an event, right? It always starts with, what happened to you, man? It's an event. What was my issue? Mine was an event. Man, my father did a lot of hurtful things to us. It was a very painful event. But guess what? From an event, and this is the cycle of anger, okay? From, from the event, it went to, it went to thoughts, Right? So you had an event. So my father caused all kinds of damage. And you know what? I had daddy issues. Okay? And some of you still have daddy issues. Men mostly have daddy issues, not girls. It's, it's mostly men. Men have daddy issues. Um, and, uh, and so the event started creating these thoughts. My thoughts, I started thinking, man, that jerk, I hate him. I wish he was dead. I want to I wanna just, and so all these thoughts started just like flooding my life and my mind. And guess what? As a man thinks, so is he. And so what happens? I became a product of my thoughts. Why can't I get past this anger? Because you're a product of your thoughts and your thoughts when you begin to think so much about whatever it is that's been hurting you or whatever it is that's been instilling fear in you creates an emotion do you see how the cycle works so event and then we go into thoughts and then from thoughts we go into an emotion and so guess what you know what the problem is with, with most people? We're, we're trying to target the emotion. Have you ever heard people say, I'm so emotional? <laughs> it's so emotional. Have you, have you ever heard that? Yes. <laughs> if that's you, just don't look at me. <laughs> I'm just so emotional. I'm just emotional. Yeah, no, listen. No, no, listen. Emotions will always be preceded by thoughts. See, too many of us are stuck here. You can't get past the event. You, you keep regretting the event. You keep getting angry about the event. Well, guess what? You can't change the event. The event is the event. You can't rewrite that event. The event is the event. The problem is no longer the event. Look at your neighbor and say, it's not the event that hurt you. Say it. You know what hurts you? Listen, let me tell you what hurts you. It's not the emotion that is the big issue. It's not the emotion. You know what your problem is? Your problem is how you think. It's how you think. Please stop talking, guys, up front. Thank you. It's how you think because your thoughts keep creating your feelings. They keep creating the feeling. And when you start creating that feeling, it, and that feeling then becomes your what? Your behavior. Right? But we won't get into that. I have so many weeks to do this, okay? Let me just start with the three. It starts with an event. From the event, you, start, you get stuck with a thought, 
and you keep thinking and thinking, and those thoughts then create your emotions. So it's not that you're an emotional person. It's just that you're someone that's always thinking too much. You're always in your head, and then you hang yourself, right? And then we start, you know what, talking things like this, like, have you ever heard the terminology of, man, I'm hangry? You know what that is? I'm hungry, angry. Huh? How about sangry? I'm so sangry. You know what sangry is? Sad, angry. I know, I just made these up. How about tangry? I'm so tangry. I'm tired and angry. Yeah. And then this is the favorite one. Man, I'm so mangry. It's Monday anger. <laughs> right? And so I, I, I believe, I believe that too many people are stuck with emotions and you're trying to change your emotion when you should really be changing the way you think about the event. You with me? Okay, foundation today, foundation, foundation. So then anger becomes the door for the enemy to put his foot in and his foot becomes my stronghold and his foot holds me down. And God's saying, stop letting his foot hold you down. And sometimes we blame the devil for our anger when in reality, sometimes it's our knee that's in our chest that's keeping us down when God wants you to get up. You need to forgive yourself. Condemnation is also an extension or a cousin to anger. The only reason you condemn yourself is because you're angry that happened. Shame is an extension of anger. Why? I'm ashamed of what I've done. You're angry. That's why. And we have to, we have to, as the church, we got to get a, a deeper revelation. Be like, wow, you know, God, no wonder. Why would God that put that verse in there? Be angry, but do not sin. Listen, Jesus was angry, man. Do you remember Jesus? Jesus had a little anger moment. Remember when he walked into Elevate Church? Right? He walks into a church and he starts seeing the people turning the church into a business. And, and they're selling, you know, birds and food. And it became a market. You know what Jesus did? Come on. Jesus had a moment of it. He started kicking tables over. Just imagine our Lord and Savior. The one that you always put like this on your cross and everything. Yeah. He was angry, man. He, uh, he, he displayed. But listen. But he says, be angry, but do not sin. Do not let the sun go down in your anger. What does that mean? Don't go to sleep angry. Address it. Deal with it. Face it. Why? Because an anger becomes a seed for your mañana. The anger that was not dealt with today is going to flourish tomorrow. You're giving it life. And so Jesus, he had an anger that was motivated by a righteous indignation saying, what are you doing to the church? What is wrong with you? Are y'all crazy? And so he had a moment, and then he went and he started laying hands on people. God, Father, you, know, you just, just heal people. That's awesome. Too many of us get stuck with our anger, and then you limit what God wants to do with your life because you're so stuck on how horrible you are. But love casts out all what? Fear. Love casts out all anger, say it that way, because anger is fear or hurt. And love covers the multitude of what? Sins. So we have to come back to the revelation of understanding what God love, love looks like to my life. How do, how do I give him permission? It's amazing how we give Satan permission to, to, to take a foothold but we won't give God permission to break the stronghold. Love, love was his answer. Listen, when you were in sin, he could have said, and I sent my hammer. For God so loved the world that he sent his hammer. He brought the smack down. No, for God so loved the world that he sent, he sacrificed his best, his son, Jesus to forgive you and me of our sins. Come on. God doesn't care about what you did in your past. God cares about the direction 
He wants to take you in for your future. You can't change yesterday, but you can change mañana. You can't change the rest of your life. You can. You can. And guess what? L let's just take it. Let me give you an example quick. Are you guys getting this? I'm almost done. I'm almost done. Don't worry about it. So there's potential for sin if, we, if we're not careful in handling our anger. And this is a perfect example of a man who didn't know how to handle it. And, and God warned him. Look at this. Genesis chapter 4, verse 2 through 7. Fast. Vamos. We got to get out of here already. It says, this is, this is, so listen, anger goes right back from the beginning. Back to Genesis. Since the beginning. So don't, don't, don't. Don't get it twisted. Anger has been an issue since the beginning of creation. And so we know that Adam and Eve, now they're giving birth to all kinds of kids. And, and here it says later she gave birth to, to his brother, okay, who is his brother Cain, Abel. And it says, now Abel kept flocks and Cain worked the soil. In the course of time, Cain brought some of the fruits of the soil as an what? As a what? As an offering, okay, as an offering to the Lord. And Abel also brought an offering, fat portions from some of the firstborn of his flock. The Lord looked with favor on Abel and his offering. Check this out. But Cain and his offering, he did not look with favor. Let me tell you something. God measures the heart of man. I'm not going to teach on this today, but this story here is talking about tithes and offerings. In other words, God loves every single one of you regardless, whether you're uh, robbing God or not. He loves you. Can't change that. He loves you. But this was the beginning of what God was establishing as a covenant of giving and making sure that your heart is constantly reminded and trained who your source is. So what happened with the anger here? Check this out. So we have Abel. Abel, the Bible says that he brought the first fruits. Everybody say first fruits. So he bought, he bought, man, when he got paid, bam, right there from the top. I went and took care of God. I sacrificed my best. Cain, on the other hand, it says, if you look at here, it says, and Cain brought his offering, right? The overlook there, da, da. where am I at? Thank you. What does it say? Okay, so he says he brought some of the fruits. So you know what that is? He was tipping God. I just brought some. You know, it's like, in other words, he didn't bring his first best. He brought just whatever was left over. That's like someone giving you leftover love instead of loving you completely. Does that make sense? And so, and so, so check this out. So Abel is highly favored, right? And, and Cain is, is loved, but he wasn't as favored as as Abel. And so look at this. Look what happens to Abel and Cain. And so uh, it says, da, da, da. then the Lord looked uh, on favor on Abel and his offering, but on Cain and his offering, he did not look with favor. So Cain was very what? Angry. It's kind of like the person, like I said earlier, that you're in church and, and everybody's happier and you're not and you're just angry because, you know, why are they happy and I'm not happy and, and why do they have more and I don't have that. And, and so we have this issue that we see a lot and uh, there's a lot of comparison. It's, and he, look what God says. He says, why are you angry, man? What is your face downcast? Why is your face down? Do you know that when you're angry, it really, it literally changes even the way you look? Huh? Your countenance changed. I remember I used to hate it. When I first got saved, man, people would, I, because I was so used to being a product of anger, my face was, was literally torqued like that. So everywhere I walked around, I was just like, but I wasn't angry really. I, on the, it was just my face stuck, got stuck. <laughs> and I would hate it because I would be, I would be volunteering and then I'd be like, I would have the people like, are you angry? Are you angry? I, I hate it. I was like, my God. And I'm like, no, why? You just look angry. And so though God changed me on the inside, come on, I had to work on the outside, right? I had to let my face know, hey, you're healed. <laughs> and so in this situation, not only was Cain internalizing his anger, but his face was showing it to God. How angry. When you have that frown, that look of just uh, disappointment, disgust, unhappy, let me tell you something. Stop being the person that says, I'm not angry. Yeah, you are. Because guess what? God says that when your face is before the presence of God, your, fain, your face, it, it, he enlightens you. There's, there's a shine, right? And so 
I'm not saying that deny the fact that you've been hurt. I'm not saying that because some of us have, have real hurt, and it's literally not only uh, hurt you in- internally, but, man, it's really changed even your, you, you, anger, anger, and I'll bring s- stats next week, anger literally changes your physique. As a matter of fact, people who constantly deal with anger are more receptive to uh, stroke and heart attacks. So there's something to say about anger. There's something to learn about this and not be blinded, not be blindsided by this. And so he says, why? Why is your face so downcast? If you look at this, if you do what is right, will you not be accepted? But if you do not do what is right, sin is is like crouching, hidden tiger, dragon, whatever. Remember that movie? Yeah, it's like, it's like, it's crouching. It's crouching at your door. So every time you're angry, guess what? Man, the door better be closed quickly because, man, Satan is always looking for that opportune, and that opportunity. And he says, the sin is crouching at your door. And look at this. And it desires to have you. You must what? You must what? That, that, that's called anger management. God is not going to rule over your anger God's saying you need to rule over your anger but the word of God will always warn you when you're in a very dangerous place that's why the word is important because the word of God will confront your anger issues the word of God will confront whatever challenge you're doing on the inside internally listen you think you're reading the word the word of God is reading you and the word is telling you, hey, Mauricio, this is what you got to change. This is what you got to adjust. This is what you got to fix. God wants to, we need his word. Listen, when you're willing to give God your anger, God can rearrange your letters so that you don't have a hang man. Are you hearing me? When I come to God and say, okay, God, when God said, Mauricio, if you don't give me that anger, I can't move forward with the plans I have for you. Listen, my anger was keeping me from my blessing. God wanted to bless me. God had a call, a purpose for my life, just like he does for you. But sometimes, listen, you will live the rest of your life not progressing, not growing, not changing. And it's not because God has been keeping it from you. It's that you just keep allowing yourself to stay that same person. But listen, but when you bring your deed to God and you say, okay, God, here, man, I'm going to forgive my, God, my, my dad. I'm going to let it go, God, but you got to help me. See, I, don't, I may not get the answer that I want about my issue. And, 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 and that situation may not change with my father, but you know who changes? I change. Prayer changes me. It may not change him, but it will change me so that, I can, so that I can overcome and rule my anger so that it doesn't become a stronghold. And so you know what God says? He says, okay, Mauricio, now I'm going to rearrange all of your letters. We're going to change that, that anger. And here's what God starts saying. He says, you know what? We're going to go ahead and we're going to revolutionize your life. We are going to make some changes. And you watch and see, Mauricio, man, life is going to be so much better when you can just trust me, rely on me, and watch what we'll do. He says what? What's that spell? Huh? Did we get that right? Nope. <laughs> he, says, <laughs> he says, listen, let's change that ex- exclamation point of anger. And he says, go near. James says this, draw close to me, and I will draw close to you. You have to give it to God and say, God, I'm angry. This person, God, my father, Hector Ruiz, damaged me. God, I'm angry. I hate him. I can't stand that man. God, what my father did was traumatic. You don't know this, but I'm going to say to you, at the age of two, I was abducted by my father. My mother didn't know where I was until I was the age of six. The woman that he was with, okay, he told me that was my mother, that that was my real biological mother. Do you know how traumatic that is when I finally met my real mom? Do you see where the rage came from? And I'm saying this because you and I have different stories, but we have the same God. And when you're willing to go near God, God can care less whether it was your fault, their fault, 
draw near to God. And God will draw near to you. And God will heal you, restore you. God will change your life. But you have to go near. Go near. Give him your danger and let him rearrange your anger and let him give you a go near. Within the anger, God already has a response. Come to me and I will deal with your anger. Isn't the Lord good? He's faithful. He is faithful. Can we give God a big hand clap of praise and just say, God, you are awesome. You're awesome. You're great. Listen. Some of you have been stuck so much with your thoughts. You haven't changed. Your attitude is always negative. Your attitude is always seeing the worst and instead of seeing the best. Listen, it's not an emotion issue. Stop saying, I'm emotional. No, you're, stop it. No, you're someone that's allowing your thoughts to drive your emotions. Don't talk about your emotions. Let's talk about what you're thinking. Because as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. And so God say, let's renew the way we think. The event is the event. The event you can't change. But your thought about the event can change. And God can't do that for you. But he can help you. You got to give God a chance. You have to. If not, you will die bitter, resentful, angry. And all those are real feelings that limit what God wants to do with your life. Stop wasting life. We're too busy trying to move forward with the next thing. No, stop. Deal with you first so that we can go ahead and do everything God want, wants us to do, everything God has us to do on this earth. Let's stop letting another day go by. Don't miss the next four weeks. Don't miss it. Don't miss it. Cain was warned. Cain was warned to close this service. You know what happened to Cain? Cain then goes and he tells his brother Abel, Abel, let's go hang out. He took him out into the desert and he killed him. And he buried him. And you see, here's the reality. Is that we can hide things on this earth from man, but you can't hide things from God. And he told Cain, Where's your brother? God already knew where his brother was. But God wants you to be responsible to own your stuff. And Cain then had, not only did he have the horrible countenance of anger, but he had the bad attitude of anger. You know what he said? He says, why are you asking me? I'm not my brother's keeper. And he said, God said to him, oh, Cain, your brother's blood is crying out to me from his very ground. And God said, Cain, because you have done this, the work of your hands will be cursed all the days of your life. Is God cursing you? No. But Satan is taking an opportunity to curse you. Why? Because God says, be angry but don't sin. Sin will always cut off the blessing. Sin will always shut the door to your breakthrough. Anger will steal years from your life. Bitterness, resentment will take years. You will age fast. You will look older than you really are when you're constantly bitter. That's why it's called bitterness. Because you're always... Everybody just starts smiling right now. Because when God changes something on the inside, God also changes the outside. If today's message impacted you in any way and you want to help us spread the gospel with a financial gift, text the number below and we know that someone's life will be changed the same way that yours was today.